good happy Thursday evening, December 3rd, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with your COVID-19 updates. New Hampshire COVID updates, new information and data. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 22,332 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. There are 13,900,350 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 537 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 842 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 273,170 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua, 302 current cases. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua, 2114. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day. New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange new hospitalization and red death. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Total current COVID-19 cases in orange. Current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple. Total positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, total hospitalization, red death, and blue recover. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate and daily PCR test. And let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder of your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. And now let's get to your other news. As New Hampshire announces seven new deaths, Dr. Chan says data shows COVID-19 is much deadlier than the flu. Single day record, 625 new cases announced today. While announcing the deaths of seven more Granite Staters as a result of the coronavirus, New Hampshire state epidemiologist said data suggests that COVID-19 is much deadlier than a typical seasonal flu. The consequences and the impact on our communities from COVID-19 is much more severe, and I think that that's clearly highlighted in the number of people dying from COVID-19 compared to the number of people that normally die from influenza every year. Dr. Benjamin Chan the state epidemiologist said a total of 544 people have died in New Hampshire since the pandemic begun. Chan said that typically about 40 to 50 people die of the seasonal flu each year in the state. So the data shows that COVID-19 is nine months in the state has been at least 10 times more deadlier than the flu typically is in a full year. This is what's happening. When we have a new virus, whether it's the novel influenza virus or a novel coronavirus introduced into the population, that has a very little immunity. Its impact, especially on our vulnerable population is significant and severe, Chan said. 
all seven new victims were associated with long-term care facilities as those settings have continued to be hit especially hard by the virus. Chan announced that there were seven new outbreaks at long-term care facilities in the state. Benchmark Senior Living at Nashua Crossings in Nashua, Grace House of Windham in Windham, Green Mountain Treatment Center in Effingham, Hanover Hill Healthcare in Manchester, Hanover Terrence Health and Rehabilitation Center in Hanover, the Source Physiatric Unit at the Department of Corrections, St. Joseph's Residence in Manchester. A total of 625 new COVID-19 diagnoses were announced, a new single-day record for the state. The new patients, including 470 who have tested positive through PCR testing and 155 cases that were confirmed through antigen testing. We will likely be seeing this surge for at least the next few weeks, Governor Chris Sununu said. There are 4,342 current COVID-19 cases and 156 current hospitalizations in the state, Chan said. Drought conditions improve in New Hampshire because of recent rainfall, but more is needed. Southeastern New Hampshire is only spot in New England still in extreme drought. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. to get a gift for my boyfriend that was about spending time together. We're concerned that in southeastern New Hampshire we may be seeing persistent snow. It was the first in that came uh, when the drought started. It was the last to leave. According to the latest drought map, southeastern New Hampshire is the only area of New England that remains in an extreme drought. Still, if you look at the map for New Hampshire closely, there is some improvement. A little bit of a reduction in the D3 zone, the extreme drought uh, for the southeastern part of the state. The recent rains have helped when it comes to raising surface water levels. Officials saying, for instance, this pond is up about six inches from a month ago. Still, a map of a well in Concord demonstrates officials' groundwater concerns. The blue line is a normal year. The red line, our current situation. When you look at September, groundwater should start going up. Instead, it's continuing to decline. Three, four, five, six inches of rain, uh, uh, still short, precipitation deficit, we call it. We're still short that amount of water for the year since May. However, even though the ground will soon freeze, groundwater levels will continue to recharge. The bottoms of these bogs, these wetlands, and these ponds, they don't freeze. And so they'll continue to contribute water. And officials are still worried about a multi-year drought. One of the things officials are going to be monitoring very closely starting in the second week of January is the snowpack. They say that'll go a long way towards determining whether or not New Hampshire is coming out of this drought. But there, too, there are indications that we may be in this drought for a while. The best models we have right now from the National Weather Service and NOAA tell us that we do have a possibility of a bad winter, that is, low snowpack. From a water management point of view, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Take a look at this photo right here. Look at these cars. Police say man took an axe to cars at rental car parking lot. As Londonderry resident waited for AAA to revive his dead car on Thursday morning, he grew madder and madder and took his anger out on cars with an axe at a rental car parking lot. The vote from customers are in. No recount needed. Donuts win. Looking like little life preservers in some 
small way they've kept us afloat during the pandemic, serving as a distraction before work or sometimes during the afternoon. Downtown Concord Donut Shop hit a hole in one despite pandemic pressure. Women charged with DWI after Hampton Beach rollover crash. Two parked cars struck as vehicle rolls over onto Hampton Beach sidewalk, police said. Take a look at the photo right here. As you can see from the crash. And that is it for this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye, everyone.